Well, hello and welcome. My name is Steve Maxwell, and in this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to take a brand new hand plane and to tune it and adjust it and get it working optimally for you. There are five points I'm going to cover. I'm going to go through each of them individually. And what you will learn here is not just for tuning up a new plane so it works well, but some of the steps are for ongoing maintenance and blade sharpening and things like that that you'll have to learn how to do if you want your plane to work properly. So to begin with, let's start by taking a look at the five main points I'm going to cover. Step one, lapping the back face of the blade. Step two, honing the blade bevel. Step three, shaping and polishing the working edge of the chip breaker. Step four, flattening the frog. And step five, flattening the sole. So before I get going, I just want to talk about plain part names and things like this. Uh, so this is a brand new, out of the box, never used before, Busy B number five and a half plane. Okay, the number five and a half is kind of universal in the plane world, uh, the numbering system, and it refers to the length and the width and the heaviness of the plane. So this is called the cap iron and it kind of holds everything down, it holds the blade and the chip breaker down. And that's what this is here. This bottom one is the blade. Uh, dealing with the blade will be the first thing we do because it's the most important thing. This is called the chip breaker. I'll show you how it works and what we're gonna to need to do to it for optimal performance. But essentially, that edge there, that's the edge that does the cutting. So, cap iron, blade, also called a plain iron, and this is the chip breaker here. This part here, the part that the, the blade and chip breaker assembly rests on, is called the frog. And we'll actually be taking that off as part of our procedure today. Um, this would be the depth adjustment wheel. Back and forth, pushes the blade out or in more to vary the cut. This lever here controls the angle of the blade relative to the body of the plane and this is called the the sole of the plane like the sole of a shoe so i'll be using these terms throughout the video and explaining more about them as we go along so step one lapping the back face of the blade is what i'm going to show you first and uh, these are held together with this this big wide screw a little machine screw and you should know that the edge of the, the end of the cap iron is a great sort of screwdriver for loosening and tightening that. We'll be dealing with, uh, we'll be dealing with this later, the chip breaker. But for now, we're going to focus on the blade. And the purpose of the blade, of course, it goes without saying, is to slice the wood. And, and for that, you need a very fine edge uh, that's at the correct bevel angle. So the bevel angle is the angle that the two surfaces form, come, form, come together to form the edge that, that's going to do the cutting. But in order for that edge to be as sharp as it possibly can be, both the bevel surface and the back face of the plane iron need to be very, very smooth. And they're not very smooth now. I mean, they, they feel smooth enough, but... When I say they need to be smooth, they need to be microscopically smooth. And that clearly is not the case here. So that's why our first step is lapping this back face. Now, lapping is a process of, um, of fine machining, essentially, that makes something flat and, in our case, smooth. That's the main thing. We want this smooth. In fact, we want this to shine pretty much like a mirror. And this lapping business... It is a one-time operation. Now, it's important you understand that. Some of the things I'm going to show you here today, uh, you need to do on an ongoing basis. But other things are a one-time deal, and that's, what, that's the category that lapping the back face fits into. Because once you've polished you know, an inch or an inch and a half of the plain iron, you won't ever have to do that again. Because as you continue to, to grind and hone your plain iron, it's going to slowly, very slowly get shorter, but it'll still be in the realm of, of a polished and lapped back face. 
So this is one kind of machine that's very useful for lapping the back face of plane irons, chisels, other things like that. Because no matter uh, what kind of edge tool you're using, both surfaces need to be smooth and polished to be as sharp as possible. So uh, this is the coarsest grit that this machine can take. It's 80 grit. And there are other discs with progressively finer abrasives on it. So I'm going to run through this and just show you how it works. And then I'm going to show you an alternative way of doing this if you don't have a machine like that. So I definitely do not want to put this plain iron down tip first because that's going to round things over. I do not want that. I want a nice flat back. So I'm going to start by letting it touch here first and then I'm just going to bring it down. Just hold it flat with moderate pressure. There's not much chance of the tool overheating, but can you start to see how that's... I mean, there's still scratch marks, but they're finer than this, and that's essentially the story of what we're doing here. Progressively finer scratch marks until we get to the point of it being polished. So, a little more of the same here. Now, what you're going to find is that at first, there's, there's no significant heat buildup. But eventually, this plain iron gets, gets warm enough that it's hard on the fingers, so you might want to get some gloves. Either that or set it aside and let it cool a bit. The good news is there's no danger of enough heat building up that it's going to interfere and, and damage the, the temper of the steel, so the consistency of the steel. Overheating is a problem. It can make the steel softer so it can't hold an edge, but there's no danger with something like this. See, we're, we're almost done this step. Uh, we're done here. We're done here. We still have some of the old scratching in the middle. So I'll just keep on going. And when it's consistent on this grit level, then I'll move to something finer. So now we're consistent up to about here. So this would work. I could go to the next grit level, but I actually want to polish it a little bit further up too, since it is just a one a one time operation. I see a few little scratches here. I don't know if you can see that. So we're not quite there yet, but almost. Okay, that's good. Uh, I'm going to continue working with this, but before I do, I want to show you an alternative method if you don't have one of these or don't want to buy one of these. So this is a piece of plate glass, and it's perfectly flat. That's, that's why I have it. It's meant for lapping, and these are the abrasives that you can use if you don't have or want to get one of those, those grinders. Um, this is uh, an abrasive powder. I'm going to be using this later for the lapping of the sole step. That would be the, the final step. So I'm not going to actually lap the blade using this method, but essentially, as you'll see, you put the abrasive on the, the plate glass with some oil, and because this is perfectly flat, you just kind of rub it like this in a circular motion through all the different grits so it gets progressively finer. Now, of course, it's going to take a lot longer than using a machine, but it is an, uh, an option, and you can do this same thing. Even if you don't have the piece of plate glass, you can do the same thing on, say, a machined cast iron surface, like your table saw or a jointer or something like that. You can put the abrasive right on the metal. It's going to make it look a little different when you're done and when you've cleaned things up, but it's not going to affect the machine at all. So it's kind of a, a simpler option. For now, I'm going to go back to my, um, my bench machine there with some finer abrasives and work through the polishing of the back so that you can see what it needs to look like when you're ready to move on to the next step. You know you've done enough on the finer uh, 
uh, on the next finer grit when you've removed all the, the scratch marks and replaced them with a, a finer finish. When you've done that, and I have not quite done it yet here, but when you've done that, then it's time to go on to the next finer grit. So at this stage, I'm at the 600 grit level and we're getting some nice results here. Just a little bit more and then we'll go on to a finer grit and then an actual buffing polish that I'll, I'll also use for the honing process. With this particular machine, um, you, you don't have to do this up very tight but because of the direction of rotation it makes this tighter so that's why I have some pliers on just for taking it off not for putting it on Okay, I've, uh, I've taken things as far as I can with this machine, and it's, it's pretty shiny. There are a few areas that didn't quite polish up. This is not unusual, but you know, we're close enough that I can go to the next stage now. And the next stage involves something called buffing. This is the last step for lapping the back of this plane iron, and it's the same sort of thing that we're gonna use in the next step honing the bevel. But for now, we're going to use this buffing wheel here to polish the back and finish off that step one process. Uh, this is a homemade thing. It's an old furnace motor, furnace blower motor. And this is a mandrel. Well, you can get these in lots of different places. This is the wheel we're going to be using for this operation. And I strongly recommend that you get some kind of a setup like this. This is what I use for all my honing now. It's very fast, it's very effective as you'll see. And this, this wheel here actually isn't a grind wheel in the usual sense. It's made of felt and it's very hard. So it's essentially a, a power honing device and it's used with abrasive compound like this. It's very fine. It, it feels like a crayon, like it's a waxy crayon. There's no abrasive feeling to it. And, um, well, you just turn it on like this and charge the wheel with this compound. So you can see the, the green is kind of transferring there. So now the wheel is charged and we're ready to, to do the final polish on the back. And we do it so that the, the wheel does not round over. It does not round over the blade at all. It's just strictly what they call tangent to the wheel. All we're doing is polishing that back surface. And remember, this is a one-time operation too. We won't have to do this again. Coming up quite nicely. It's a little bit more to polish here, but we're almost there. I think one more go on the hard felt buffing wheel will be done. It's shining like a mirror. Now that is half of what you need for a good edge. The other half is what's called the bevel, the angled part of the blade. And if you notice, it's just as coarse as the backside used to be. But it won't continue that way. Um, the next step is actually quite quick, especially if you're using a buffing wheel like this. So let me show you how step two works, honing the bevel. So do you remember the 
last time I, with the last step, I told you it's a one-shot deal, lapping the back. Um, well, the bevel, honing the bevel, is not a one-shot deal. As you use your plane, maybe even after every 15 or 20 minutes of use, you're going to need to re-hone again. And uh, so it's the same operation that I'm going to show you now, applied to this new plane iron. But before we get to all that, and it is a fairly easy process, by the way, when you have a buffing wheel set up like I have here. But before I get to that, I need to talk to you about bevel angle a bit. For a regular plane like this, a bevel angle between about 25 and 30 degrees is what we want. So by bevel angle, I mean the angle formed by this bevel here and the back face of the plane iron that we just, that we just worked on. And um, so let's just... Uh, Got this this digital sliding T bevel here. So you see we're we're just about 25 degrees. That is what you want. And you know, even cheap hand planes are gonna come with a correct bevel angle. So it's really not an issue. That that angle is something you'll have to think about later. Because with more honing, as as you do more and more honing, that angle starts to get steeper. Not necessarily across the whole bevel, but right at the tip, because that's where you're honing. That's, that's really all you care about, is the very edge of this blade. And the more you hone, the steeper it's going to get. And it's going to get to the point where even when it's honed properly, it won't slice very well, because the effective working angle is so steep. And that's when we need to do some re-grinding. So re-establishing the bevel using uh, the tool that I showed you. Previously, you can use a bench grinder for that. There are different things. But right now we're okay. And 25 degrees is excellent because it's, it's a little on the, the, narrow, uh, the, the small side, which means that as we hone, that angle is going to get higher, going to get larger. So we've got some leeway. Honing is nothing but polishing. And the buffing wheel is so aggressive at finely polishing, that I don't need to do anything to pre-treat this, this bevel. This, this is pretty coarsely ground, as these things always are when they come from the factory. Uh, if I was using some sharpening stones to hone this, or some abrasive discs that spin, I would have to go through a whole bunch of stages, progressively finer. But because the buffing wheel is so aggressive and so fine, I can go right to the buffing wheel. And as you'll see in maybe a minute or two at the most, this plane iron will be empowered to do something remarkable. Um, shave hair, slice wood cross grain cleanly. I mean, right now, that's well, cutting a few, but it's not really performing properly. This is currently of no use to us as a woodworker, but very shortly, it will be of use to us. So let's head over to the buffing wheel. So I've shown you my buffing wheel already, but let's look at it again because we're going to be using it in a little bit different way now. The main thing, if you remember back, was to have the blade encounter the wheel so that it is tangent to the wheel. So in other words, I, that's the beveled surface there. We're now going to be polishing this to make it sharp. And I want it like that as I'm buffing. And because this wheel rotates towards me, I can look down from the top and I can get a really good idea of the angle that I'm buffing at. I do want to buff the tip. That's the working edge essentially, so that's what matters. I don't really care so much about buffing further back, but then again I don't want to round things right over because then the blade won't slice properly. So I'm gonna, when I turn it on, I'll charge the wheel again and then I'll just work back and forth, looking at from the top so that the tip is being honed. Now as I'm honing here, if, if you remember, this is a very fine abrasive, but it's actually fairly aggressive because the wheel's spinning so quickly. I'm paying a little more attention to honing the, the corners of the blade because I don't mind if they curve up a little bit. Because I don't want that blade the corner of that blade to catch on the wood. So I like to do that a little bit, just on the corners. Okay. 
that's looking pretty good. You see the honing action has taken place there. On the tip. I still need to do a little bit more, but can you see how we're, we're starting to get a really nice polish there? Let me do a little bit more and then we'll test the edge. See how well it slices. It's worth testing right now. Back is nice and shiny and polished. The working edge of the bevel is nice and shiny and polished. And let's just see how it shaves. Pretty clean. That's one sharp blade. You know, I showed you this. This, this is just a recap. This is the first two steps. And these are the most important with a new plane. And certainly the honing I just did is something you're going to need to do on an ongoing basis. So let's just get a piece of wood and see how well it actually slices before we go on to steps three, four, and five. So a, a tough assignment for any blade is to cut cross grain cleanly. And let's see what happens here. Well, that's pretty well as good as, as edges get. If there was, yeah, this looks great. This is a very sharp edge. If I saw any tearing out here, like, you know, more of that sort of thing, I go back and buff again, but this is completely acceptable. I mean, don't forget that's, that's end grain. So it's pretty challenging operation. The heart of any plane is the blade. And this blade is now empowered and hungry and very effective. It's as good as it gets. But if you remember, step three involves what's called the chip breaker. It works in conjunction with the blade. So let's go and take a look at that now and see how we can tune it up. So if you remember before, this is the chip breaker. And normally it's bolted to the blade so that the tip of the chip breaker is you know, maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so back from the tip of the blade. You can vary that depending on whether you want to take a, a very fine cut, just a little bit showing, or a, a wider cut, more showing. There, there's more to adjusting the plane than that, but this is where the chip breaker sits. And its job is to direct the shavings created by the blade as it goes through the wood to direct those shavings up. It, it causes them to curl and to come out of the plane as opposed to just kind of riding straight up. So in order for the chip breaker to work properly, it really needs two things. And once again, this is a one-time operation. You only need to do this once on your chip breaker. First of all is, is to round it a little. I like to round it a little bit because the, the the name of the game is to reduce the friction of the wood shaving against the chip breaker. So the plane is just easier to push through. So of course we need to take it off for that. And the process is involves two steps. First, I'm going to use the machine that I showed you before for lapping the back of the blade. I'm going to use that same machine to, to change this from uh, an angled profile to a curved one. And then when I have that to the shape I like and fairly finely ground, then I'm going to go back over to the buffing wheel and I'm going to polish this. So it's just super smooth, super low friction. I'm going to be using the hard felt buffing wheel, but I'm also going to use another wheel that I'll tell you about when we get there. Before I get grinding, I have to warn you about something. I definitely do not want to make this any shorter at all. I, I do not want my grinding efforts to have, have anything to do with the tip of the chip breaker. I just want to make this, this angle, this peak here, I want to make it rounded. And you know, not all planes have chip breakers of this style. Um, here's an old plane. It's been in my family for more than a hundred years. And you can see, look at the chip breaker there. It came already rounded. It needed to be polished, of course, for minimum friction but it was already curved, so I didn't need to shape it. 
like I'm going to shoot the one to show you now. But um, just one other thing. For the chip breaker to work, as, as you can imagine, it has to sit completely tight to the blade. If there's any gap here, as the shavings come up, they're not going to ride up on the chip breaker and nicely curl and go out of the plane. They're actually going to jam in that crack. And we don't want that because that's going to make your plane plug up. No good. Uh, high quality planes like the Busy Bee planes already come with these basic machining tolerances correct. But the only reason I'm telling you about it now is because we want to do a little check. I'll do that later. A check to make sure there's no gap. But also just to emphasize that when I do this grinding, I don't want to touch the tip at all. It's just got to sit flat on the blade. So I just want to curve it. That's a pretty easy thing to do. Just do. So it's starting to get curved, but not quite enough yet. I don't grind for very long before I take a look because I want it to be nice and even. Like for instance, I can see with my eye that this has been ground a little bit more than that. So I'm going to give a little bit more attention to that side. It's looking pretty good. It's quite coarse though. It's not coarsely ground. I will go through a few more of the different grit levels here on the discs. And just refine it more and then we'll go over to the buffing wheel where I'll show you something you've seen before and something you haven't seen before. Amazing how that shape can change. And so much less friction too, once we get it all polished. I have finer discs. I could refine this more, but there's no need to. The buffing wheel, because it's both fine and aggressive, can take care of this in short order. So let's head on over to the buffing wheel and we'll fire that thing up. So before I showed you the hard felt buffing wheel in action, and that's the one we're going to start with for the chip breaker. Notice how I'm rolling it back and forth because I want to polish that whole edge. It's polishing up quite nicely. Certainly it's very shiny and smooth here at what used to be the, the peak. I'm still seeing some scratch marks there in the middle, so I'll keep buffing. But essentially when this thing looks like a mirror, it's going to work really well. But right now I want to show you another wheel. It's a buffing wheel. Whereas this one was hard, this one's quite soft. It's made of pieces of cloth that have been sewn together. I do not like to use this for honing an edge because it tends to round over the edge too much. But for curved surfaces, it's great. I actually use this for the inside of my carving gouges too. But it works very well over, over something like this. It kind of follows the contour in a sense. Still a few little scratches there. Maybe I should have gone further with the grinding machine here. I'll polish it a bit more, but it's so smooth and shiny. The 
chips are just going to slide over that quite easily. I'll give it a little bit more. Then we're going to go on to step four. So this is a chip breaker tuned and ready to roll. Very smooth. Looks like a mirror. Chips are going to just uh, slide over that, no problem. Now it's on to step four, and that has to do with what's called the frog and how it supports the blade and chip breaker. So these screws do more than just secure the frog into the plane. And oh, I should mention too, this whole frog business, this is one time, one of those one time things. But you see, the, the holes aren't round, they're oval. So you can move the frog back and forth a little bit. I'll show you all about that later when we put it back together. Essentially, we just take it out like this. And we need to take this out temporarily because our job now is to lap this flat and smooth. We absolutely cannot <clears throat> do this operation on anything other than a very flat surface. There's no point in going to the buffing wheel because it's going to make it nice and shiny and smooth, <clears throat> but it's going to make it less flat actually because if I buff in a certain area mo more than another, it's going to make a, a very small depression. We don't want that. Basically, we want to think like machinists right now. And we're not terribly interested in a highly polished surface because you know, we're not making an edge of this. All we want to do is to make sure it's flat. Now, my guess is that this frog is perfectly flat because the busy bee planes are machined to a high tolerance. But I don't really know. And so the lapping process will tell me how I'm doing, how, how, how flat the frog is. And if it's not as flat as it should be, then I'll just continue the lapping process until it is as flat as it should be. But essentially, it's a matter of putting down some abrasive paste and then just rubbing this like this. So I get out my oil can and we'll start making a slurry here because we are going to need the same slurry for the final step, which is also a one-time thing of lapping the sole of the plane. So time to get a little messy. So this is a piece of plate glass that I keep for this purpose. It was clear, now it's kind of frosted. It looks like something you might have in your bathroom just from the abrasion of me using it before. Now I should mention too that the purpose of the glass is just to create a perfectly flat surface. So instead of using this paste, I could use some wet dry sandpaper and put it down, wet it with oil, and then do my lapping on that. If I was doing that, I would probably start with 120 or 180 and then maybe go up one grade after that. But like I said before, we, we don't really care about a, a polished finish here. It doesn't have to be particularly smooth or shiny. It just has to be flat. I'll use this, um, the paste method, because we're going to have to use the paste method later when we do the sole, because a piece of sandpaper is not big enough for a sole that's this long. I could use this with water too, actually. Uh, but I prefer oil when it comes to lapping like this. Now, of course, this, this part sticks down here, so I can't actually lap past that spot, but that's okay. This is where the support happens. Now, I may or may not have to rub this frog a long time. Uh, the busy bee planes are quite finely machined, so I don't think we're going to have any flattening to do. But how this looks as we start to lap will tell us if it needs it or not. So. If it's flat, 
I should see uh, evidence of abrasion everywhere. And that is exactly what I see. I do not see any areas that weren't being rubbed by the abrasive. It's nice and even. It's actually even a little bit rougher than it was before. But like I said, that doesn't really matter. This is what you expect <clears throat> with a high quality plane. It's one of the reasons why you pay a little more than you would for a hardware store plane, because this sort of basic machining is working well for you. Let me get a cheap hardware store plane and let me show you what a non-flat frog looks like. So this is a $50 plane, very cheap. I heard it from Amazon, just so I could show you what's going on here. Now, can you see here on the side? It's fairly smooth right there. That corner there, also fairly smooth. But other areas like here and here was never touched by the lapping. And I didn't do the whole lapping job. I just did it a little bit to show you. This is what unflatness looks like. This plane will perform a lot better if it's lapped properly so that it supports the blade fully. But that's essentially what we're looking at. This is a flat one, and this is a not flat one. So when your frog has proven that it's flat or you've made it flat, it's time to put everything back together. It's pretty simple. Pretty standard for different planes. There's two screws that that hold the frog down. Um, I have. Uh, I, I'm going to do them up. Just starting to be tight. I'll show you in a second. I've also put this this uh, machine screw back in. Uh, the the amount that it goes in needs to be adjusted. I'll show you that in a second. But the reason I haven't gotten this these screws completely tight is because if you look back here. Can you just see in there? There's an adjustment screw in there, right inside. And that moves the whole frog forwards or backwards within the body of the plane. So we essentially want the frog to be kind of more or less flush with the opening here. So you see, that's the, that's the transition there because this is going to support things too, as well as that. So we're in a good position that way. And I'm going to just tighten these up. All planes that I've ever seen, steel planes, have nice big slot screws. They're very easy to tighten without stripping out. Now the next step is going to be flattening the sole, or at least testing to see how flat it is and then maybe going on to do some more lapping but for that to happen properly we need to have the plane completely buttoned up why well because when the blade is in place and the cap iron is in place um, i've adjusted this so so that the cap iron just fits underneath and then the whole shebang can be tightened down with that there. So the reason why I want to do the lapping with the blade in and tension on is because this tensioning action could change the shape of the plane body a little bit. We're talking about thousandths of an inch here. So it's not a spaghetti noodle and it's steel, but it can still bend. And this is the way the plane's going to be used. So of course we want to check it and possibly lap it in the same tensioned position. Of course, our precious blade, the blade we've invested all that time in lapping and honing, we don't want that anywhere near the abrasive. So it's well retracted right now, well out of the way, well above the opening here. And, um, and we're ready to go on to step number five, which as I said, is lapping the sole. So I've spread some more 90 grit silicon carbide abrasive powder here. Put some more oil on it. We're all ready to try some lapping here of the, of the sole. So let's see how we're doing. 
It's quite even here. Quite even. I see a little more rubbing here on the sides. I think I'll give it a little bit more. Um, let me show you that cheap plane again. Um, by comparison, we'll see what a non-flat sole looks like. So uh, here's this plane. We've, we've got some extra abrasion going on here. I think I'll continue to lap this a little bit, but it's quite good, really. And then this is the $50 hardware store plane, which I started to lap. You can see quite a bit of difference. There's a lot going on here and here. Here's another high spot. That's a low spot. Didn't even touch that. And it's low all through here. So essentially, when you buy a better plane, you're buying better machining. That's what it really comes down to. So let's give it a little more rub here. We'll see what happens. Now I'm going to finish up here doing two things that I like to do regardless of how flat the sole was. Thing number one is I'm going to take a file and I'm going to gently ease this edge. It's a 90 degree corner and it's fairly sharp. I mean, it's, it's probably not going to cut you, but it doesn't have to be perfectly angular. It can be rounded a little bit, so it's just more comfortable to use. And then I'm going to polish the sole using that buffing wheel that I was using before. I'll use the cloth wheel. I don't want to change the shape of it, of course, because I want it to be flat, but I do want it to be polished so it's nice and slippery. The less friction, the better. So I'll just go grab my file and then we'll get on with the buffing and finish up. And then we're going to actually plane with this thing and see how well it works. So just a few file strokes on the corner. Um, you should always have, keep your files in little sheaths like this. It really helps them to last longer. This is probably on its last legs, but it'll still do a fine job here. Nothing too crazy. Just, just uh, take that sharp corner off. And now we'll do a little buffing so that it's nice and smooth and friction free. So this plane is ready to go. I've got some wood here. We're going to give it a try, but just, just to recap that last step, I've polished the sole just finished up by hand with this, uh, this rubbing pad here. The corners are nicely eased. They're not going to cut anybody. This is very smooth and low friction. If you remember uh, back earlier in the video, I said some, some of these operations are one-time operations and others you're going to have to do regularly. The main thing is that the blade be sharp, that the back face of the blade be lapped and smooth and, and polished, and that the chip breaker be rounded and polished. And that's what we've got here. That's kind of the main thing. And just by comparison, this is what it used to look like. Um, that was the chip breaker before. This is the chip breaker now. This was the blade before. This is the blade now. So it's all ready to go. And uh, let's give this thing a whirl. You can't really adjust the depth of cut properly until you try to start planing. So let's see. Not enough blade sticking out there. Give it a little more. Maybe a little more yet. That's the really nice thing about a hand plane is that it can take rough, not too pretty wood like this with saw marks and make it exquisitely smooth. I wish you could feel this. This is a lot smoother than you can get with any kind of abrasive because it's actually slicing the fibers. So it works really well. Oops. 